Well, oh, guys, today we'll be reading Winnie the Pooh, Chapter 7. Also, V I I. Okay. So, let's go. Let's start. On the witch king going, baby Roo, come to the forest. Piglet has a bath. Nobody seemed to know where they came from, but there, there they were in the forest. Kinga and Baby Roo, when Pooh asked Christopher Robin, how did they come here? Christopher Robin said, in the usual way, usual way if you know what I mean, Pooh. And Pooh, who didn't say, oh. Then he nodded his head twice and said, in the usual way, ah. Uh. Then he went to call upon his friends. Piglet to see what he thought about it. And at Piglet's house, he found the rabbit. So they all talked about it together. What I don't feel like, like about this. It, it is this, said the rabbit. Here are we, you Pooh, and you Piglet, and me. And suddenly, and I or, said Pooh, and I or, and then suddenly, and now. An owl, and then all of a sudden, oh, an owl," said Pooh. "I was forgetting him. Here we are," said Rabbit, very slowly and carefully. All of us, and then suddenly we wake up one morning, and what do we find? We find a strange animal among us. Okay, an animal of whom we have never even heard before. Nana, who carries her family about with her, with her in her pocket. Suppose I carried my family about with me in my pocket. How many pockets should I want? Sixteen. Said Piglet. Seventeen, isn't it? Said Rabbit. And one more for a hand, handkerchief, handkerchief, handkerchief. At eighteen, eighteen pockets. In one suit, I haven't, I haven't time. There was a long and thoughtful silence, and then Pooh, who had been frowning very hard for some minutes, said, "I made it fifteen. What? Fifteen? Fifteen? What? Your family? What about them?" Pooh rubbed his nose and said that he thought Rabbit has been. Had been talking about his family. Did I? Said Rabbit carefully. Yes, you said. Never mind, Pooh. Yes, you said. Never mind, Pooh. Said Piglet impatiently. The question is, what do we do? What are we to do about Conga? Oh, I see. Said Pooh. Said Pooh. The best way. Said Rabbit. Would be this. The best way would be to steal Baby Roo and hide him. And then one king says, "Where's Baby Roo?" We say, "Uh huh, uh huh." Said so practicing, "Uh huh, uh huh." Of course. And one time, we could say, "Uh huh," even if we hadn't stolen Baby Roo. Pooh, said Rabbit kindly, "You hadn't, you haven't any brain." I know. We say, uh huh, so that Kinga knows what we know where Baby Roo is. Uh huh means we'll tell you where the Baby Roo is if you promise to go away from the forest and never come back. Now don't talk while I think. Pooh went into a corner and tried saying, uh huh, in that sort of voice. Sometimes it seemed to him that it did mean what Rabbit said. Sometimes it seemed to him that it didn't. I suppose it's just practice, he thought. I wonder if Kinga will have to practice too, so to so as to understand it. There's just one thing," said Pig. "But fig fig getting fig that hurt me. Fig shedding, fig shedding a bit. I was talking to Christopher Robin, and he said. 
that Ikenga was generally regarded as one of the fiercer animals. I'm not frightened of fierce animals in an ordinary way. But it is well known that if one of the fiercer animals is deprived of its young, it becomes as fierce as two of the fiercer animals, in which case, aha, uh -huh, is perhaps a foolish thing to say. Piglet, said Rabbit, taking out a pencil and licking the end of it. You haven't any pluck. It is hard to be brave, said Piglet, sniffing slightly. When you're only a very small animal, Rabbit, who had begun to write very boldly, busily, looked up and said, It's because you are very small that you will be useful in the intervention before us. Piccolo was so excited at the in idea of being useful that he forgot to be frightened anymore. That when the rabbit went on to say that Congress were only fierce during the winter months, being at other times of an affectionate disposition. disposition, he could hardly sit still. He was too eager to begin being useful at once. What about me? said Pooh sadly. I suppose, I suppose, I shouldn't, I shan't be useful. Never mind, too. Said Piglet com comfortingly. Another time, perhaps. That Pooh said Rabbit solemnly, slum, solemnly, as he sharpened his pencil. The adventure would be impossible. Oh, said Piglet, and tried not to look disappointed. Who went into a corner of the room and said proudly to himself, Impossible without me, that sort of bear. Now listen, all of you, said Rabbit, when he had finished writing. And Pooh and Piglet sat listening, listening very eagerly with their mouths open. That was, this was what Rabbit read out, read out. Plan to capture Baby Roo. General remarks, Kango runs faster than any of us, even me. Two more general remarks. Kanga never takes her ba eye off Baby Roo, except when he's safely but buttoned up in her back pocket. Three, therefore, if we are catch, if we are to catch Baby Roo, we must get a long start because Kanga runs faster than any of us, even me. I thought if Rue had jumped. I thought if Rue had jumped out of Kanga's pocket and Piglet had jumped in, Kanga wouldn't know the difference because Piglet is a very small animal. Five, like Rue. Weird. Six, but Kanga would have to be looking in the other way first so as not to see Piglet jumping in. C2. 8. Anyway, I don't fight. But if Pooh was taking to her very excitedly, she might look the other way for a moment. 9. And then I could run away with Drew. 10. Quickly. 11. And Kanga wouldn't discover the difference until afterwards. Well, Rabbit read this out proudly, and for a little while, after he had read it, nobody said anything, and then Piglet, who had been opening and shutting his mouth without making any noise, managed to say, managed to say very huskily, and afterwards, how do you mean, when Kanga does discover the difference, then we all say, aha! All three of us? Yes. Oh. Why? What's the trouble, Piglet? Nothing, said Piglet. As long as we all three say it. As nothing as we all three say it. Said Piglet. I don't mind. He said. But I shouldn't care to say. Aha! By myself. It wouldn't sound nearly so well. 
By the way, you said you are quite sure about what you said about the winter months? The winter months? Yes, only being fierce in the winter months. The winter months? Oh, yes, yes. That's all right. Well, Pooh, you see what you have to do? No. No, said Pooh Bear. Not yet, he said. What do I do? Well, you just have to talk very hard to Conga so as she doesn't notice anything. Oh, what about anything? Oh, what about anything you like? You mean like telling her a little bit of poetry or something? That's it, said Rabbit. Splendid. Now come along. So they all went out to look for Conga. Conga and Roo were spending a quiet afternoon in a sandy part of the forest. Baby Roo was practicing very small jumps in the sand and falling down muscles and climbing out of them. And Kanga was fidgeting about and saying, Just one more jump, dear, and then we must go home. And at that moment, who should come stumping up up the hill? Pooh. Good afternoon, Kanga. Good afternoon, Pooh. It's going to be jumping. Squeeze. And fell into another mouse. Hello, Roo. Hi, little fellow. You were go just going home. Good afternoon, Rabbit. Hello, Roo, my little fellow. We are just going home, said Kanga. Good afternoon, Rabbit. Good afternoon, Piglet. Rabbit and Piglet, who had now come up from the other side of the hill. Good afternoon, and hello, Roo. And Roo asked to them, look at him jumping. So they stayed and looked. And Kanga looked, too. Oh, Kanga, said Pooh, after Rabbit has had winked at him twice. I don't know if you are interested in poetry at all. Hardly at all, said Kanga. Oh, Roo, dear, just one more jump, then we must go home. There was a short silence while Roo fell down on her mouse. Go on, said Rabbit in a loud whisper behind his paw. Talking of poetry. I made up a little piece as I was coming along and went like this. Now let me say, fancy, said Kanga. Now, Roo, dear, you'll like this piece of poetry. You love it, said Piglet. You must listen very carefully, said Rabbit. Oh, yes, said Kanga, but she still looked at Baby Roo. How did it go, Pooh? said Rabbit. Pooh gave a little cough and began. Lines written by Bear at Very Little Brain. On Monday, when the sun is hot, I've wondered to myself a lot. Now is it true or is it what? Not? The what is which and which is what? On Tuesday, when it hails and snows, the feeling on me grows and grows. That hardly anybody knows if those are these or these are those. On Wednesday, when the sky is blue, I have and I have nothing else to do. I sometimes wonder if it's true. That who is that one of a zoo? On Thursday, when it starts to freeze, I'm hard frost twinkles on trees. How very readily one sees that there are woes, but whose are these? On Friday. Yes, it is, isn't it? Said Kanga. Not waiting to hear what happened on Friday. Just one more jump, will you? And then we really must be gone. Rabbit gave Pooh a hurrying up sort of nudge. Nudge. Talking of poetry. Said Pooh quickly. Have you ever noticed that tree right over there? Where? Naru. Over there. Now, jump in, Rudy. We'll go home. You ought to look at that tree right over there, said Rabbit. Shall I lift you in, Rue? And he picked up Rue in his paws. I can see a bird in it from here, said Pooh. Or is it a fish? You ought to see that fish from here, said Rabbit. Unless it's a fish. It's a fish. It's a bird. 
said Piglet. So it is, said Rabbit. Is that, is that a starling or a blackbird? said Pooh. Is that a starling or a blackbird? said Pooh. That's the whole question, said Rabbit. Is it a blackbird or starling? And then, at last, Conga did turn her head to look. And the moment that her head was turned, Rabbit said in a loud voice, In you go, Roo! And he jumped Piglet into Conga's pocket, and off scampered Rabbit with Roo in his paws as fast as he could. Why? Where's Rabbit? said Conga, turning round again. Are you all right, Roo dear? Piglet made a squeaky little noise from the bottom of Conga's pocket. Rabbit had to go away, said Pooh. I think he thought of something. He has. He had to go and see about something. And Piglet? I think Piglet should off something at the same time. Suddenly. Well, we must be getting home, said Pooh. Goodbye, Pooh. And with real large jumps, she was gone. Pooh looked after her as she went. I wish I could jump like that, he paused. Some can and some can. That's how it is. But there were moments when Piglet wished that Conga couldn't. Often when he had a long walk home through the forest, he had wished that he were a bird. Now he fought jerkily to himself at the bottom of Conga's pocket. If this is flying, I shall never really take to it. And as he went up in the air, he said, Ooh! And as he came down, he said, Ow! And he said, Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! All the way to Conga's house. Of course, as soon as Conga unbuttoned her pocket, she saw what had happened. Just for a moment, she thought she was frightened, and then she knew that she was. She knew she wasn't, for she felt quite sure that Christopher Robin would never. Christopher Robin would never let any harm happen to her. So she said to herself, "If they, if they are having a joke with me, I will have a joke with them." How dare you, dear? She took Piglet out of her pocket. Bedtime. Aha! As well as he could. Said Piglet. As well as he could after his tough tough and chewing. But it wasn't a very good. Aha! And Conga didn't seem to understand what it meant. But at first. A cheerful voice. Aha! Said Piglet. Said Piglet again. Looking around anxiously. For the others, but the others weren't there. Rabbit was playing with Baby Roo in his own house and feeling more fond of him every minute. And Pooh, who had decided to be a conga, was still at the sandy place on the top of the forest, prancing jumps. I'm not at all sure, said Conga, in a, in a thoughtful voice, that it wouldn't be a good idea to have a cold bath this evening. Would you like that, Roo dear? Piglet, who had never been really fond of bats, shuddered a long indignant shudder and said in as brave a voice as he could, Conga, I see that the time has come to speak. Has come to speak. Piglet, who had never been there. Kinga, I see that the time has come to speak plainly. Funny little Roo. Said Conga, as she got the bath water ready. I'm not Roo, said Piglet loudly. I'm Piglet! Yes, dear, yes, said Conga. And imitating Piglet's voice too. So clever of him. And she went on as she took a large bar of yellow soap out of the cupboard. Cupboard. What will you be doing next? Can you see? Chad Piglet, haven't you got eyes? Look at me. I'm looking, Roo dear, said Conga. Rather severe, severely. 
And you know what I told you yesterday about making faces. If you go on making faces like piglets, you will grow up to look like piglets. Then, King House, are you what? Be. Be. Now then, into the bath. And don't let me have to speak to you about it again. Before he knew where he was, Piglet was in the bath, and Congo was scrubbing him firmly with a large lacquery flannel. Ow! cried Piglet. Let me out! I'm Piglet! Don't open the mouth, dear, or so it goes in, said Congo. There, what did I tell you? Do you did it on purpose? Spluttered Piglet. Had another mouthful of water. Lottery flannel. That's right, dear. Don't say anything, said Congo. And in another minute, Piglet was out of the bath and being rubbed dry with a towel. Now, said the Congo, where are your nursery bits? Now, said Conga, there's your medicine, and then bed. But what, what medicine, said Piglet? To make you grow big and strong, dear. You don't want to grow up small and all and weak, like Piglet. Do you? Well then, well then. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. Come in, said Conga. And it came Chris Robin, Chris Robin, Chris Robin. Conga, who I am? I'm not Rue, am I? I'm not Rue, am I? Mr. Robin looked at him very carefully and shook his head. You can't be Rue, because I've just been playing in Rabbit's house. Rabbit's house. Well, said Conga. Fancy that. Fancy my making a face look like that. There you are, said Piglet. I told you so. I'm Piglet. Christopher Robin shook his head again. Oh, you're not Piglet, he said. I know Piglet well. And he's quite a different color. Piglet began to see that this was because he had just he had just had a bath. And then he thought that perhaps he wouldn't say that. And as he opened his mouth to say something else, Conga slipped the medicine spoon in and then patted him on the back and told him that it was real quiet and nice taste when you got used to it. I knew it was in Piglet, said Conga. I wonder who it can be. Perhaps it's some relation of Pooh. Said Christopher Robin. What about nephew of an, or an uncle or something? Kanga agreed. Kanga agreed that this was probably what it was. What it was. Where is it? What it was. And said that they would have to call it by some name. I shall call it Poodle. Poodle, said Christopher Robin. Henry Poodle for short. And just when I was decided, Henry Poodle rigged out of Congo's arms and jumped to the ground. To her great joy, Christopher Robin had left the door open. Never had Henry Poodle. Piglet ran so fast as he ran, then and he did. When uh, just when it was decided, Henry Poodle and Wrigley out of Conga's arms and jumped to the ground to his great joy, Christopher Robin had left the door open. Never had Henry Poodle Piglet run so fast as he ran then, and he didn't stop running until he had got quite close to his house. But when he was a hundred yards away, he stopped running and rode the rest of the way home. So I asked to get his own nice, comfortable color again. So Kanga and Rue stayed in the forest, and every Tuesday, Rue spent the day with his 
great friend Rabbit. And every day at Tuesday, Congo will spend the day with her great friend Pooh, teaching him to jump. And every Tuesday, Piglet spends the day with his great friend Christopher Robin. So, they were all happy again. Okay, guys, that's all it. And then, next we'll go to chapter 8. So, please like and subscribe.